So, rants on two topics. Number one, Yu-Gi-Oh. Number two, effort. I suppose they kind of go together. Firstly, Yu-Gi-Oh. The card game, not the anime. Spicy take. Brace yourselves. Incoming. Yu-Gi-Oh is terrible. It's awful. It's unplayable. It's a horrific, terrible, unplayable, botched, ugh, absolute trash heap of a card game. I hate it. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. And here's the thing. I wanted to get into it. I wanted to like it. I did. I wanted to like it. You know why? No reason. No reason at all. YouTube videos, I guess, made it seem like it was a cool, interesting hobby. And then I actually played it. I downloaded the free game on Steam. Started to play the practice matches, of which there are an absurd amount. So put in multiple hours, let's say three, four, five hours, just doing like practice matches, learning some of the really esoteric, arcane, not user-friendly game mechanics. And then, before I was done, decided, you know what, let me see what a normal game is like. Because these AI bot matches are not necessarily an accurate reflection of, you know, the game itself. And, to be honest, not really fun right now. I don't know any of these cards, and every card has an absurd amount of text that takes 20 minutes to read. It's ridiculous. But hey, you know what? Maybe the actual game is better. It's not. It's worse. Literally played one game, went first, using the deck that they provided me, which I assumed, I knew, was going to be underpowered, because, you know, it's a pre-made free deck, of course. Let's, you know, commensurate with Magic the Gathering or something like that. Obviously, I think you get like five or six free decks in Magic, but neither here nor there. You get a free deck, you go in, and you get rolled on turn one. Turn one, the game ends. If you are playing a trading card game and can lose on turn one, your game is broken. Literally any time that has ever happened in the history of a, a real game, Magic the Gathering, the card, the one card that allowed that to happen is banned immediately. Because everyone understands that a one-turn match is not fun. It's not a game. It's at that point flipping a fucking coin and going, ooh, you win, you lose. Fuck you, fuck that game. Immediate uninstall, and I will never try it again. I don't care if someone can offer me an absurd amount of money, and I will begrudgingly sit through it. And I, there's no way I will enjoy it. Because that initial experience, knowing that that can happen, colors the actual game. It colors your idea of the game because if the game is that busted and broken any other remedies that you might introduce to improve the quality of the game are immaterial because the inherent flaws of the game are such that that is possible a turn one loss is not acceptable in a car in, a, in any card game. It's not possible. It doesn't work. Mm. Topic number two now. Effort. Obviously, I was not thinking about this rolling into each other, but they do. The reason you hate Yu-Gi-Oh, the reason you should hate Yu-Gi-Oh, is because of the lack of effort. The lack of effort that goes into it is inherent in the idea that it's a bad game. The idea that it's a bad game is not because the art's bad. 
the art is obviously and objectively way crappier than a Magic the Gathering. Not a question. It's a fact. It's an absolute objective fact. That's a lack of effort. But, oh, okay, it's a stylistic choice. Whatever. It's fine. No big deal. Right? And who really cares, ultimately, on art in a trading card game? It's a cool aspect, but it's not the meat and potatoes. So, the lack of effort is in the rule set, is in how they balance things, how they have moved on and have evolved over their entire history, and therefore the feature creep that comes in. Magic the Gathering has a very similar issue, where in which games now, cards now, are far more complicated than they used to be. That's true. But they are still balanced in the sense that the core design of the game is inherently balanced because of the use of resources and the use of uh, mana pools and so on and so forth. They allow for any deck, even an incredibly super fantastic, really great deck, to still absolutely be able to be beaten by a crappy deck because... Obviously, in a card game, luck is a factor. Do you draw well? Do you draw poorly? You can be the, the top guy on the planet at that game, draw poorly, and lose. That is a part of the game. Such that, realistically, most meta decks will have a... If they have a 70% win rate, you would think, oh, they just don't have enough games yet. Eventually, they're going to but jump down and like the best decks are going to have like a 60% win rate. And they're just going to be able to pick their battles. That's the best they can do. Yu-Gi-Oh, on the other hand, does not have any of those limiting factors. That is the lack of effort in their initial game design. That is what breaks them. And that lack of effort is what breaks people in real life. Like this. For me, this feels like a lack of effort. This video feels like a lack of effort on my part. I don't know if I'm doing enough to earn your attention, your views. I don't know if you're still watching this right now. I mean, obviously, if you're hearing this, you're still watching this, but odds are a lot of people clicked on this and then clicked off. Because the value proposition was not apparent. I was not, potentially, putting in enough effort that you recognized it immediately and said, Oh, okay, this guy's putting forth some effort, so I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. And I will give him some of my attention. Of which you are all having a limited supply of. We all have a limited supply of attention, and we all have a limited supply of effort, but effort is far more easily gamed, far more easily gained, far more easily spent. Attention, you really only have so much of that a day. You can overclock to a, you can overdraft, I should say, to a degree, but it's going to catch up to you very quickly. Effort, you can push. You can push on effort. And if you super overdraft too far, too long, then you will burn out. That's true. That's accurate. Especially if you're not seeing any returns on that effort. As, unfortunately, and again, not to be a Debbie Downer on this, but and I'm not seeing the returns on my effort for this venture that I would want to be. I've got some irons in the fire that I think are going to go well, that are going to do well, but there comes a point, sooner possibly rather than later, that I have to step back, look at myself, and say, hmm, I don't know this really going 
to work out. And I should pivot, switch lanes, do something else because you know what? The signals that I'm getting back from the market are such that this is perhaps not for me. It's not to say that I don't enjoy doing this because I would, I would say I do. Maybe I'm deluding myself and it's not, you know, actually doing all that it could or should be for me. That's a possibility. But if that's the case, that's how you get through the day. You know? That's always how you get through the day in any kind of effortful situation. This is worth something. If you don't initially think it's worth something, you convince yourself that it is. Otherwise, you're not going to do it. Any job is that way. And therefore, I'm convincing myself that this is worth it. But, as I've said, the signals back from the marketplace really need to determine whether or not I continue with this. I know there are some people that enjoy this. I don't know how much. You know, like, would it be a real loss if I stopped doing this? My instinct and intuition says no. Could be that some of this is YouTube. Well, I should say some of this definitely is YouTube updates throwing me into a tizzy. But that's the nature of being on this platform. And because of that, you have to be able to roll with that. And if you can't, then yeah, that's another signal that you need to be doing something else. So, effort. I'm going to keep doing it. Keep putting forward that effort. For, you know, a little bit longer, I think. Probably a lot longer. But if I don't see a significant change in the trajectory of this, I think we're going to pivot and I'm going to do something else. Because I don't know. Maybe this is just not for me. Maybe my voice is just not an ASMR voice. Maybe my ears are not ASMR ears. And the things that sound good to me doesn't translate. And if that's the case, so be it. You know? Not really any skin off my back. I've learned a good about good amount about YouTube. And I think I could certainly do better doing something else faster than I would have if I had done that first. But Yep, that's it. Thanks.